Welcome and greetings from Riverside United Church and the Anglican Church of the Resurrection in Ottawa. My name is Paul Dillman and this is the re scripture reflection and hymn for the weekend that includes July 5th, 2020. As we gather together, we acknowledge that we gather on the unceded and unsurrendered land of the Algonquin and trust that wherever you are, you will acknowledge the land, the indigenous land in which you gather. We pray for truth and reconciliation in our nation. As we gather together, we continue to be a scattered community, but we continue to gather together as sisters and brothers, as siblings in Christ. And so we light our Christ candle, reminding us that it is the light and love of God that draws us into community, into a circle of love and hope. And we light our affirming candle, a rainbow candle, reminding us of our commitment that all persons are welcome that all persons know the dignity and hope that is the gift of our Creator. Our scripture reading today is from, from Psalm 137, and Daphne will now read that for us. Psalm 137, verses 1 to 6. By the rivers of Babylon we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. There, on the willows, we hung up our harps when our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors called for entertainment, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my hands wither. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Live the questions. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Let us pray. God of life, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our minds and hearts lead us to deeper understanding of you and the love you call us to live. Amen. One of my favorite questions asked in the Bible is this one from Psalm 137. How do we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? It's a question that frames much of the dilemma of what it means to live with faith in our time and in our context. Many of us have seen great change in the role of faith in the society, and there is some lament, and we question some of the assumptions of the past and wonder about the possibilities for the future. This biblical question emerges out of the writings of the time of exile in the Hebrew story. The exile is one of the defining times in their history. For the past couple of weeks, the great biblical questions in this sermon series have been out of the Exodus story. But the exile is later in their story. While in many ways these great questions transcend the original context, it is helpful to root them in the story in which they are asked. The exile was a foreign land in Babylon, but also a strange land in terms of identity. For generations they have been taught to think of their relationship to God being physically dependent on the temple in Jerusalem. Now they had no access to it, and when they did get back it had been destroyed. This was a faith and identity crisis, and a great deal of the Hebrew scripture writing comes out of this time when faith was transformed. They came to an understanding that the covenant with God was written on their hearts, and not limited to being contained in the Ark of the Covenant in the Temple. This exile time was uncomfortable, and in the discomfort, new understanding and faith emerged. Many of us would not see our time as a foreign land, but it is strange times. One phrase that I've heard more than once over the past weeks is, it's a different world out there. We have lived with changing norms and values in the culture for a while, but this pandemic time has been a time when some of the norms and systems of our society are being examined in new ways. So the eternal question, how do we sing the Lord's song in a strange land echoes in our souls and reverberates through our communities and structures 
in new ways. And God's song is not limited to hymn books and to chants. The Spirit of God finds voice in various genres of music and in choral truths proclaimed in various ways. What is the Lord's song that we are invited to sing? What is the Lord's song that we are invited to live? While circumstances and understanding shift and evolve, what is God's song? As I was thinking about this question, I found myself thinking about three themes of how I understand the eternal song. It's a song of dignity. One of the realities of the exile time was that part of the crisis of faith was a crisis of identity as their dignity was stripped away. In the psalm, we hear that the tormentors demanded of them to sing one of their songs. It's hard to maintain dignity when it is stripped away by all sorts of judgments and torments. The holy song of dignity is offered to all, and that is a powerful proclamation when our world has so many limited definitions and creeds about what gives a person worth. So we sing the song of dignity, which is rooted in the creation story that proclaims that we are created in the image of God. It's a song of love and action, a song of justice. Somewhere along the way, faith has become a personal and private matter, but nothing could be further from the biblical proclamation. That song of dignity becomes a command to seek justice and to resist evil. And one of the shifts, maybe one of the transformations, of this strange time and land is that societal systems and barriers are being exposed. The reality of the pandemic seems to have opened up room for truths to be revealed and voices from the margins to be heard. Will the cries and the persistent voices and harmonies be heard? Will there be transformation? Will there be justice? And the third eternal song theme is that it is a song of hope. The holy composes a song of hope. The status quo does not have to be the way things are. The exile was an important time, but the despair and the lament of the people was not the final verse in the song. God offered a path of life and hope. And that has been the song that has been offered through all kinds of realities and situations. How do we sing the Lord's song? We sing and live dignity and justice and hope and the holy God will be known. There have been many songs composed that seek to try to capture the will and the vision of the holy. There were the songs. There were the songs of Zion. There have been hymns and contemporary songs. There have been genres of music that have sought to capture the lament and the despair and offer hope. The blues, the spirituals, rap, all kinds of songs that have allowed the soul to find voice. So how do we sing the Lord's song? Most of the time when I have contemplated this eternal question, I have focused on what's the strange land or what is the Lord's song, but now the first words of the question take on meaning. How do we sing? How do we sing when it is dangerous to others for us to sing because two meters of distance is not enough? because singing is more powerful than speaking. One of the essentials of worship is song, and right now, even if we decided to gather in worship, there would be so many things that would be different, and near the top of that list for me would be that it is not safe to sing together. So how metaphorically do we sing the Lord's song together? They sang so that God's dignity and justice and hope would be proclaimed in their context. They needed the wisdom of the Psalms that proclaimed to God, sing unto God a new song. So how is our faith refreshed through song? We sing unto God the old favorites and the new songs because our faith is carried forth in song probably more than by sermons, but don't tell the preachers. Singing can be more powerful than speaking. 
So what tunes? What lyrics? What forms of music will proclaim dignity, justice, and hope in this strange time? As our songs arise, both literally and metaphorically, the Spirit of God is known and unity and harmony is known. Robert Lowry captured the importance of the gift of song in his hymn that asked the question, How can I keep from singing? Above earth's lamentation, the far-off hymn echoes in the soul. How can I keep from singing? 